guys, it's Tuesday. Oh, Bonnie and Clyde are in here with us. Yeah. I know why Bonnie's in here. She expects her milk this morning. Like she does every morning now. Yes, Bonnie, you want your milk, don't you? Well, I have to clean her out of first. Yeah. I have to clean her up first. You don't poop on my coat. That's gross. Okay? Can we not poop on my coat? There, just hang it up back here. Over here. The goats will be like, ooh, that's new. I can't go by that. That's new. Right, Miss Autumn. Right, my sweet girl. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's too sweet for me. She looks for Bonnie. My milk, crazy lady. I want my milk. Yeah, that's in the barn cat. Whew, I'm tired this morning. My husband is rethinking his, uh, I don't want to move down south. I wanted to go back to Texas. Oh, such a long growing season. And the snow, the lack of snow. That's what was selling me. I looked at Oklahoma. I'm a desert, though, in Oklahoma, and I'm really not a big fan of desert. I like to visit it, but I don't want to farm in a desert. No. I'm too water addicted. That was the only thing good about living in the Pacific Northwest is that it's a temperate rainforest for like nine months out of the year, and the other three months it's a desert. You get less rainfall than a desert. So you really do have to figure out a way to work within those parameters. So I did everything. I, I planted my trees in raised beds. Everything I planted out there was raised beds. So they could be mulched really well. So I left so much of my garden stuff back. What I should have done, instead of being in such a rush, is I should have taken more time. Yeah. I just didn't want to lose this place. Because despite the fact that there's a leak in the roof that I need to get up there and fix, which is scary in itself because it's a huge building, um, there's a lot of good infrastructure here. We didn't have to build a barn. Um, we have plenty of buildings for storing hay and uh, farm equipment so it won't be out in the weather. Animals. One should we should tear down or fix the, make it so that it's easier to get into because I'll make a video someday and show you how. 
to say Jerry rigged, but I don't want to insult anybody whose name is Jerry. Um, it just, you have to wonder why they just didn't take down the building instead of leaving it all hodgepodge. And maybe because it was worth more with more buildings on it. Although I found when you're trying to finance, it's not as easy. Because financing this place, so my husband's uncle has been in banking all his life. And so when we discussed moving back, he was like, oh yeah, I, you know, I'll help you find the loan. It'll be no big deal. Da -da -da -da, all this good stuff. And we were like, well, cool. Now, you know, we've got a lender. We got a, a letter from the lender. We sent them all of our information. And they were like, oh, yeah, we can finance you. And we got a letter saying they'd finance us for a certain amount. And that, you know, how much money we could spend. Which always surprises me how banks will say, oh, you can have a million dollar home. And I'm like, did you not look at our income? I can't afford a $4,000 month house payment. Maybe someone else can, but I can't. Let me continue this with the other goat. So come on, Mama. Mama got a pretty easy water. I'll fill that. I'll turn it on. Come on. Come on, Mama. tell me that I should tie Summer's back feet, which trust me, I tried. Um, try it with Autumn. And when you try and tie their back feet, they lose their minds. Chickens? <sighs> well, because they're a prey animal, and they're already confined by their neck. So I may take her up on it and try it. We'll see how it goes. Well, otherwise, we just need to milk through it which is another option that I can do. Get out of that bucket. I don't have any grain for you chickens. I didn't. I didn't bring grain in for chickens. You're supposed to be out of my barn. There we go. So back to the financing. Really? So... We had to run documents to the bank, and we were living almost three hours away in Marquette. And so we had, uh, we'd gone and I'd given them our address where we were staying. I'm like, we're not in Washington anymore. And they sent us something, and it was no big deal. And so then I, everything's going through. We got all the loan processing. We've got a signing date. And I get this registered, I get a letter. I don't remember if it was registered or not. But I get a letter that had been forwarded from our old address out in Washington State. And it's a letter from the bank. And I'm like, well, why would they send us a letter 
in Washington. They know we're in town. I mean, I've talked to the lady, the, lo the lending lady. I told her we were here in town. That's how she was able to call me on the phone and, you know, ask for items they needed or stuff. So, anyway, I get a hold of I open up the letter. And meanwhile, it's three days before closing. And I get a hold of, I read the letter, and it is said that because of the type of the appraisal, that there were too many buildings or too much acreage to qualify for a loan. To qualify for the loan they wanted to give us, because the loan they wanted to give us, they could sell. And because they couldn't sell this type of loan to another lending agency within four or five years, they changed the terms of the loan to a five-year loan with no promise of, um, no promise of refinancing. So they weren't. They, they would not agree to refinance us, and we'd have to look at it again. And that we had a balloon payment of two hundred thousand dollars in five years. So technically, we would pay a mortgage for five years, have to owe everything that we purchased the property for. So we didn't have any equity. We still owed what we were buying it for. And they weren't going to promise to refinance us. And I was like, uh, no. I'm not signing that. So he got a hold of his uncle, my husband's uncle. And he was like, well, that's a good, that's a good, that's, that's a standard loan. I'm like, no, the original letter was a 30-year fix. With no penalty for paying off early at whatever percentage rate it was. And he's like, well, you still have the same percentage rate. I'm like, with a balloon payment. I go, where am I going to have, you think I'm going to make $205,000 in five years as a teacher? I don't know where you think I'm teaching. It must be a different planet. So... Anyway, so we had to call the seller, we had to call the realtor. Um, I immediately started searching for another finance company. And I came across a company called Greenstone. I cannot say enough positive things about Greenstone. It's not your traditional bank. It is not for profit. It is a co-op bank, so you have to have good credit to get in. Um, you have to have equity. You have to be a good a good loan candidate. And because this is our third house, we have a history of years paying our payments on time, you know, not being late on house payments, paying things off, not having issues, um, good credit scores, and we had a down payment. And so, got a hold of them, I told them all of our stuff, told them what had happened, and they got back to me the very next day, and we had, you know, I talked to the guy, had uh, the realtor send them the appraisal, all the other stuff that went with, you know, property, and, and within 24 hours, probably 48 hours, we had secured another loan. And so, because it's not for profit, it's a co-op, their profits can't be given to shareholders. All the people who have loans are considered shareholders. So what happens is instead of a CEO or a group of CEOs getting all the profits, it goes to and you guys stinks. It goes back to the people with the loans. So the first year we got a check for 
almost one payment, one house payment. This year we got back two grand as our share of the profit. So, hey, stop. I can only say great things about Greenstone. I could, I could never. I would like for them to have like, they've got tax accountants for tax preparing. They specialize in farm hunting, recreational property. I can't say enough because we wouldn't be able to have this place. Because the traditional bank wasn't going to loan the money for it. Which is absolutely ridiculous that a traditional bank would loan me. We weren't asking for any more money. They would have loaned me the money had this been a condo in Marquette for half a million dollars, way more than what this was. She said to keep milking you through your tap dancing, Missy. So that's what we're gonna do. And so, are you out of food? Do you like a little more milk, chicky wicky? so weird that they love the milk so much. What is it not deep enough? Here, I can share. I have plenty. Here we go. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous and funny. All right, let's see. Do you need, you need more corn is what you would like. You would like some more corn, would you? You would. You would. All right, there's your corn. So if you're looking to finance, I would look at them. I don't know if they're in every state. I'm in Michigan. Um, our electric company is also a co-op. So again, the only thing with the, uh, the co-op, so if I were building this, if I'm building something, and my electric company is a co-op, you have to pay for the, the majority of the installation and the, and the electric line costs for you. Because they're not going to make a profit off giving electricity for that property that you have. Which can make it extremely expensive to run electricity and stuff. So... That's the downside. The upside is that again, the money that you put into it does not come from, doesn't go to a bunch of people sitting on a CEO board somewhere. It goes back to the people who are paying for the electricity, which is nice. So we get a check. We get a rebate check back from them every year, too. So, now if I could just get all my equipment and start making my own hay and selling my own hay, I could turn a profit. Right? Right, love bug? Yeah? That's your milk. Did you want to drink some of your milk? You want your apples. You want your apple cookies, Summer? Hmm? You want your apple cookies? What do you think about that? Hmm? Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You have a mouthful. Did you have a mouthful? Ready? Last one. Oh, you guys are spoiled. You are some spoiled billies. Yeah. All right, I have to bring this to your sister. And I have to give you some extra water. And I have to make the horses have hay. So we need to shake a leg, Mama. My hat on, it's gonna be cold out there, even though I'm warm from being in here. Mmm, corn? Yeah, let's do corn. Come on, let's go. Let's go, Mama. All right. I will see you guys later. Have a good day.